Welcome back, everyone, to Nanaliza Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadowfury, whichever you prefer. And we have a match between Randy and Ultra Godzilla on Frosty Cove. We're actually, some chat going on, talking about how it'd be interesting to see Zero K with StarCraft level micro. They were talking about a GLSL tournament that happened this morning for StarCraft 2. And pointing out that both Ultra Godzilla and Randy are very strong micro players. I mean, Randy having played a lot of StarCraft. Ultra Godzilla, I'm not sure what their history is, but. Apparently, they are also very keen when it comes to getting good micro going for their glaives. Though they have gone for shield bots, which is a bit of a harder factor than micro bandits. You can still micro reasonably well, but it's not quite the same as glaives. Fighting against spider bots, and that's going to be even harder to micro around because you got a lot of basically hit scan weapons. I mean, they can be dealt with, but they are hit scans, so it's going to be a bit trickier to actually work around. Right off the bat, Randy going for a bunch of fleas, going for just normal scouting, seeing what can happen. Ultra Godzilla, having started shields, is going to have a bit of a harder time getting information. I mean, they should be able to stop the fleas once they find them, but that's always the trick, isn't it? Actually finding the fleas in order to get rid of them. Ooh, clever. Forcing the flea to move, getting it out of there, that's... That's the best one to get rid of. That's the one that's going to make sure that Ultra Godzilla can actually do what they want to do without being spotted. The other two are going to spot exiting forces. So Randy has a reasonable amount of information about what Ultra Godzilla is sending, but not so much information about what... Wait, where's the... Oh, there it is. Yeah, not so much information about what gold it, or sorry, sorry, Ultra Godzilla is building in the meantime. So the band is coming in for the scouting. Ultra Godzilla knows, hey, a couple banners coming in here. Maybe build some redbacks. Coming into the main base. Getting the one redback in here. And actually, oh, it's Flea coming in already for a bit of harassment. Should force that convict bit back. I mean, the band will get rid of it. But again, spotting what's happening. Randy knows exactly what Ultra Godzilla is expanding to. And Ultra Godzilla has really no idea what Randy is up to. Working on it, definitely. They do have the bandits going around the map, trying to find what they can. But it's going to be challenging with one bandit dead and the other bandit kind of going a bit of a dead end. So unfortunately, no real knowledge about what's happening over to the northern side of the map, where on the other hand, this flea... Well, this flea found out exactly everything they needed to know about how Ultra Godzilla is expanding. So I'd say Randy definitely winning the information war early on. I kind of wish Ultra Godzilla would just turn, like, grab a radar, turn it into a swallow, and... Or Sparrow? I can't remember what that's called when it transforms. Sparrow! They're both tiny birds. Turn into a tiny bird! And then run it around the map. But seriously, yeah, turn one of the radar towers into a sparrow. Or make a radar tower for a sparrow in order to win get back information. Because there's not really going to be any anti here this early in the game. Maybe a picket. But at this point, no. And knowing exactly where your opponent has the anti here or has any defenses in general is going to be extremely useful, especially with the red back around here. That is not something you want to fight head on if you can avoid it. Which is exactly what this bandit is going to do, and learn why you try to avoid it. Really, at this point, Ultra Godzilla is just finding themselves in a very difficult situation where they really don't know where to attack. I mean, they're making some good guesses, but they don't know what Randy has going. They don't know where exactly where to attack. They're kind of, honestly, a little bit at a loss. I'm not gonna lie, it's a bit of an awkward position. As it stands, though, Randy should be able to get rid of most. Of the, well, I mean, okay, they have information. They're kind of a bit behind on that. Oh, Ultra used to play a lot of Spring Commander. Okay, thanks, Claw for Claw for you, Claw for. You? That's good to know, though. That's... Yeah, that explains a lot. I mean, the Spring Commander's a little bit harder to micro in just because of the... You, your units do not respond very quickly in Spring Commander. <laughs> That's the really nice thing about Zero Kid. They actually respond when you tell them to do things. Spring Commander let you go three at a time every half second when you tell an entire group to do stuff. It's honestly very annoying. But I digress. More importantly, we are seeing tables turning a fair bit. Two Weavers are... Heavily under threat. The Bandit is going for it, not even caring about the Lotus. Actually, kind of nicely walking around just to get hit by... Have different Bandits hit by the Lotus at different times. And it looks like they're not going to be able to kill the Lotus. Really should have gone for the other Weaver, because that Weaver's just going to repair the Lotus and be like nothing happened. Always go for Constructors. 
Like, it's always, always, always better to go for constructors, even if the defenses are there. Even if it's a suicide attack. Well, maybe not even if it's a suicide attack. That's not great. Although, it, it can be worth it. I mean, you're... You're actually mass... Like, for one thing, it's making cost. And for another, you're massively increasing the amount of time it'll take for any more units to come in to rebuild. Or just to expand in the first place. Now, at this point... At this point in time on this map, there isn't really much farther this weaver can go. I mean, it could reclaim a bunch, which it's going to do. But there's not much else it could do. That being said, the reclaim is not nothing. Not to mention, Randy is expanding over to the southwest side of the map as well, just putting Ultra Godzilla really on the back foot when it comes to their economy. Now, I've got to commend Ultra Godzilla. They are managing to maintain a reasonably strong economy in the face of this, but it's just not enough. Nonetheless, Ultra Godzilla can take its western side. This assault right here is basically going to, de to determine the game. And it looks like Ultra Godzilla has the means to get rid of this. Should be able to get rid of all the defenses. And there aren't a whole lot to begin with, and Thug is doing a fine job just setting up for that. Also helping out a little bit with the Felon charge. Once this last Lotus is gone, it's basically going to be... That's going to be it. Ah, but it's not gone yet! Lotus preventing any further shield growth while that felon is in range. Still, it's that southwest side has been taken back. And at the same time, we have a center assault coming in here to distract the flow of the defensive forces, meaning that entire southwest side has been opened up. Thanks to the nice little distraction play from Ultra Godzilla. So Ultra Godzilla now finally managing to take their entire side of the map from Randy, because... That was cheeky of Randy. Well, at least in theory, actually. Where are the convicts? No, the convicts are still kind of out of the way. They aren't in yet. And another we No, sorry. Reckless is coming in to try to resecure the southwest side of the map. Ultra Godzilla. I'm sure they want no part of that, but they are having to wait a bit for the felon to recharge its shields. I mean, granted, one shot will get rid of the Lotus, but of course, you have the Reckless to deal with as well. And there's not a whole lot to deal with them. I mean, we do have bandits that have been built up. We do have. Also, Ravens, just in case. But it looks like the Ravens are going to be used to get rid of Randy's commander. Really closing out the side of the map. And, ooh, yes, we are going to see exactly that. Ravens swarming down to the commander. Take it out. Randy's frontline construction has been massively reduced as a result of that. That'll be very helpful. On top of that, getting rid of just getting rid of a weaver or two. Nicely done. Get rid of some constructors. And while all this is happening, the center of the map, Ultra Godzilla going for a very strong assault with... Just one thug and a couple of rogues, or a handful of rogues, banned as thugs. Doing a lot of damage over the western side of the map. Randy going for a counterattack over to the southwest. But with all the ravens coming in here, it's going to be difficult for that counterattack to go far. I do kind of wish Ultra Godzilla had an air pad, but Randy is still going to be having difficulty approaching just for the damage being dealt on them. Phoenix is coming in, getting rid of everything on top of... Now, mostly Convict is coming in to try to reclaim trees, primarily. Get what they can economically. Not a bad idea. At the same time, wiping out Recklesses with Ravens. Not a bad idea. Recklesses basically can't hit the Ravens, so yeah, go for it. Tear them apart. You might as well. The center force for Ultra Godzilla still managing to hold Randy back, but not managing to find a whole lot of ground. Unfortunately, these bandit... Ah, oh, these Convicts are all getting slaughtered by the Recklesses! Ultra Godzilla, what are you doing? Move the convicts back! Uh, no. The convicts. That, I think... Uh, Randy is so far ahead economically, having wiped out all those convicts that would have been able to rebuild the western side of the map. Ultra Godzilla, they are so heavily on the back foot now, I think they might have lost the game by losing all those convicts. I mean, it's not over yet. But that is a massive blow. Like, that is such a huge blow that, I mean, granted, Ultra Godzilla does have 3,000 metal advantage, or 4,000 metal advantage. So, there is that. Ultra Godzilla is definitely being very efficient when it comes to using their units, but not being able to rebuild, not being able to reclaim, that is still a massive blow. Compared to having, like, 25 metal per second on reclaim, now they have none. Maybe five once this convict over here gets down, but that's about it. There's really not much to be said for that. I mean, Ultra Godzilla is basically struggling to maintain their southwest. Whereas the equivalent side for Randy, the northeast, there's a few metal extractors being broken here or there, but really not a huge amount of difficulty maintaining that control. So Randy's economy, again, at a massive advantage. Ultra Godzilla's massive 
efficiency advantage is basically just having them break even. And it's maybe maybe enough. It may be. Good use of defenses. Good, good attacks on defenses, I should say. And now we do have comics coming in here and starting to rebuild, but again, it just feels like it's really kind of late. Like those five comics that were there before rebuilding everything, that was that was the ticket. Still, though, a lot of very well-placed assaults coming in here from the Ravens. Taking out metal extractors, taking out key defenses, using swifts to scout out, make sure they know exactly where the anti-air is. Or rather, distracting the anti-air while we have Ravens coming in, wiping, trying to take out Tarantulas. Brave idea, that's for sure. But I can't deny it's working. Ultra Godzilla's use of air here. Like, I love the fact that they're splitting their Ravens. They're going for different metal extractions. They're going for key targets. They're not swarming in a single thing and overkilling with the Ravens. They are going in hard with a lot of stuff. Although, unfortunately, people pointing out in the chat that there's an e-stall is from the fact that it takes, I believe it takes energy to repair and reclaim. Or it takes more energy to repair. The energy cost to repair went from 50% cost of the unit to 75% cost of the unit. And then there's also just it's more time, so it's more cost. So yeah, unfortunately, Ultra Godzilla is e-stalling as a result. But they're managing to raid out a lot of Randy's economy at the same time. Wiping out a lot of their energy. Nice Phoenix there. Getting rid of a handful of wind generators. A little bit further north would have been perfect, but still not bad. Can it escape the Raven? It can, just barely. Though still, the energy costs are becoming prohibitive. I expect we'll be seeing Ultra Godzilla try to go for something. Oh, okay, wind generator is not bad. In this map, they have 0.7 on the low ground, at minimum. So the wind generators are definitely very efficient, but I kind of wish they'd put in a sneaky, like, sneaky fusion generator somewhere, maybe? Oh, no, never mind. Wind's, wind's picking back up. Ultra Godzilla will be able to get back to repairing, get back to rebuilding as needed. But I'm not sure how much this assault actually dealt damage. Ultra Godzilla got a lot of reclaim out of it. I mean, the main thing I'd say is that that provided a distraction that left the southwest open. Unfortunately, not long enough as Randy is returning to the southwest to try to take out everything they can. And that will potentially wipe Ultra Godzilla out. Now, Ultra Godzilla, what are you doing? Going with their commander, not even caring, just building, literally colonizing with lotuses, just saying, you know what, forget it. I'm going to build lotuses in your territory, wipe you out, while at the same time pushing back that offense force over to the west, or at least trying to push it back. Unfortunately, not managing to do a bit too much in the way of actual resistance. But still, the distraction is working out. And actually, it looks like the distraction is working out so well, it's causing Randy to have some of the forces damage themselves. But yeah, Ultra Godzilla just offensive defense just hard pushing this is starcraft style hard push this is exactly what this is build defense i mean granted it's not with like siege tanks or whatever that would require that ultra godzilla play spiders i suppose for the crabs but still just stick defenses in your opponent's territory just claim it that way and yeah, clock you're pointing out in the chat that that is this is apparently a very strong strategy if your opponent doesn't counter it which I would agree with, except for the fact that they are countering it. Ultra Godzilla forced to retreat with a commander. And granted, it's not countering the massive amount of static defenses being placed in Randy's base. It is, however, potentially destroying the commander. So that commander is going to need to be very careful where it places itself. Because all the recklesses are going to be causing problems. However, Randy, there's no getting actual anti-ground gunships. And that is potentially a problem. I mean, again, gunships can be bombs. So it's not the biggest deal. But I kind of wish Godzilla would build a caretaker here to heal their commander. Just so that they don't accidentally get blown up by something. Like a stray rocket coming in from Recluse, for instance. Which, again, I'll grant, have been doing a lot more damage to Randy's base than to, than to Ultra Godzilla's. But it's still going to be a bit of an issue. Especially as we have a force coming in here trying to get rid of the static defenses and Ultra Godzilla kind of alone with their commander over to the north. Still managing to take that southwest reasonably well. Managing to get a lot of reclaim off of it. There's the defense coming in here, but Ultra Godzilla's commander unfortunately in too tight of a position. Forced to retreat again. 
losing the position they built up and jumping into an unsafe position, not really able to retreat from here, honestly. They're gonna try. Actually, they should be able to get their jump back in time, but there just isn't anywhere to retreat to. Ultra Godzilla has relied so much on air power, they don't really have anything on the ground, and this last shot from the Hermit will take out the Recon Commander. There it goes, right before the jump gets rebuilt. Countering Ultra Godzilla's assault, and I think at this point, Randy, they have a good chance for a counterattack. Now, granted, Ultra Godzilla is actually way ahead in economy. It's hard to tell in the minimap, but Randy basically has no static economy. I mean, they have this, this set of metal extractors up here, have a couple over to the south, but they've lost at least half their metal extractors just on surgical bombing raids by Ultra Godzilla. But unfortunately, Ultra Godzilla had invested a lot in those defenses, and now Randy having broken that. There's not a lot they have to deal with. I mean, Ultra Godzilla didn't have much in the way behind that. They honestly don't have much to stop this assault here, just considering that it is far from their base. We see Drex in chat making slightly rude comments on the GG, but of course the players can't see what the spectators say. At this point, Ultra Godzilla, they are in a pickle. They don't have much reclaim. They don't have much in the way of on-the-ground forces. They are building some quite quickly, but there's only so much they can do. And unfortunately, again, they're losing that southwest side of the map, and Randy looks to be coming in on a potentially deadly assault. Same time, there was a counterattack coming from Ultra Godzilla, but I have very little confidence in what it can actually accomplish. I mean, stack defenses are still in place. That Stinger in particular is presenting a massive problem. Same time over the south of the map, we do have Ravens coming in, trying to find targets, trying for something to kill, but it's just not really working out. The Redbacks making that impossible. Same time, ground forces are coming in for defense for Ultra Godzilla, and to be fair, there's a lot that can be said for what shield bots can do in cramped quarters. Not sure how it's going to work out. I would love to see a felon in this, but... The thugs may work out fine just for the shields. And indeed, there they come. Phoenix is coming in for a bit of support. Unfortunately, hitting the thugs more than hitting the spiders. More than hitting the hermits primarily. Slugs losing all their shields in the process. That I think that's broken Ultra Godzilla's lines more than anything. Slight misplay on that Phoenix. And their forces over to the western side of the map, not managing to find or eastern rather side of the map, not managing to find a whole lot of damage. And that is looking to be game. Randy moving in here. And with nothing to defend against it. And that is... That's going to be tricky to deal with. I think it's going to be... Oh, one last stand coming from Ultra Godzilla. Randy playing it safe. Actually, more Randy having their units on fight move. So Randy's units automatically playing it safe, but still. Choosing to have them play it safe. But with all the territory Randy has, they're rebuilding their economy. Ultra Godzilla lost a ton of their territory and never really had full control over it to begin with. Even if Ultra Godzilla wins this, they're going to have to take back the southwest. Ideally for them, going to have to keep pressure on the economy, which is going to be harder and harder with that Nimbus over there. And also get rid of all these forces and take that reclaim. That would be the only way they have. That's the only path they have back in this game, and I don't see that happening for the amount of effort they're putting with the Outlaws, Ultra Godzilla simply doesn't have the firepower to deal with this before it's all destroyed. Like, at least, doesn't have the firepower to win this without a Pyrrhic victory. That's the only way they're going to get out of this, and even that's not happening. It is unfortunately a Pyrrhic defeat. Randy having just barely enough units, they should be able to get through this after they've wiped it out, and actually, to be fair, when I say Pyrrhic defeat, I kind of mean it. Randy lost a lot of forces in the process. Ultra Godzilla pushing back with Bandits, the right choice to use against the Recluses. But even with that taken into account, it doesn't seem likely that Ultra Godzilla is going to have a way back in this game. They are delaying the inevitable, it seems, more than anything, as Randy coming in with a fairly large spider army over to the north should be able to wipe out basically everything. And that is looking... That's looking bad. Ultra Godzilla making some comments that look like they're probably going to GG. And Randy, yeah, Randy coming in on all sides. So, overall, this game, Randy kind of had the advantage from the beginning. They had their own end of the map. 
They kept taking the Southwest. Ultra Godzilla was struggling to maintain control over the Southwest. Just because it's hard to get units in place to deal with the Recluses. Or Reckless Redbacks coming in. But also, Ultra Godzilla really wasn't putting a lot of effort in defense. They were putting a lot of effort in the mid-game into air units, which worked really well to slow down Randy's income. I mean, you see the metal income right here. Randy actually started getting below Ultra Godzilla because of the use of Ravens. But ultimately, Ultra Godzilla didn't manage to translate that into a massive economic advantage of their own. They just got parity. So it didn't actually do the work it needed to do. And granted, it's kind of difficult with the slower constructors of the Shieldbot Factory, and generally slower units of the Shieldbot Factory. The key there is just to have them placed in advance. Once Ultra Godzilla started getting armies over to the western side of the map, things became a lot more stable. But by that point, Randy had already taken a, f a massive lead economically. Their army value was at least on par, if not ahead. And at that point, there was so much investment into air, which was doing a fair bit of work, if at the cost of its own life. And that's kind of the problem, is that it was still not really an attrition advantage, and Ultra Godzilla didn't get a massive economic advantage, so I liked the thinking. It was really well played. Gotta say, like, the use of the Ravens was amazing. That's how I want to see Ravens used. Absolutely textbook use of Ravens. Just targeting all the metal extractors, splitting them up. Great micro from Ultra Godzilla on that part. It just, unfortunately, didn't come with corresponding macro to retake the Southwest aggressively while trying to also retake as much as they could in the center. And I like that center push. People pointing out in the chat, however, that it's not great against spiders because they can just walk over this hill. So it's difficult to defend against in a way that against other factories it just wouldn't be because they'd only have the ramp coming out of the main base. Spiders of the hill, you're seeing all the units just walk down now. And that changes the dynamic considerably. I think it's doable, but I don't. I didn't see Ultra Godzilla take that into account as much as it was relevant considering how that all went down. Not to mention Ultra Godzilla didn't have much of an escape plan from there. I think if they had come in and then try to take the southeast at the same time, like bomb out the stinger and then just rush, like bomb rush with a bunch of forces on the ground, then it would have been a bit easier because then the commander could have retreated back there and they would have turned the tables on Randy's whole take the far from the base corner strategy. And I would have loved to see that. But still, well played. Definitely well played. Yeah, Flying Finn... I, okay, you don't see Ravens as raiders, and it annoys me because they are they are absolutely amazing at that. Like, they one-shot metal extractors. They are really good at getting rid of most of the small defenses, even the large defenses like Stinger. That's four Ravens, but the rest of the defensive units that come up, they're basically one-shot by Ravens. So essentially, you just throw Ravens wherever you need to open things up. Or just to slow your opponent's economy down while at the same time having ground forces pushing against it, and your opponent is just going to run out of money compared to you, and after the first wave, if you win, or even break even army-wise, you're going to come ahead later because you have a stronger economy because you destroyed all of their metal extractors. It's a risky play, but it can really pay off. Anyway, that was that, so the next match we're going to have is going to be between... Izzeride and Kshatriya on Mercurial. So Mercurial is a map that you will find familiar because it is Quicksilver, except it's an updated Quicksilver that I believe fixes the performance issues Quicksilver had. Because Quicksilver had some really bad performance issues. Not sure exactly why. I think it was something to do with the trees. Anyway, we'll be having that in a moment, so stay tuned because that's that'll be up quickly. <laughs> 